We're hearing private member statements. I call the member for Penrith. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, as we start 2017, I think it's a good opportunity to remind the House and the people of Penrith just an, across the number of things that we've been able to do over the last 12 months. Uh, and it's fair to say, Mr Speaker, that over the 16 years that the Labor Party was involved in government in Penrith, it was definitely taken for granted. But the last 12 months is a really good snapshot of how things have changed so significantly under this government. We've seen the Nepean River Green Bridge now under construction. Uh, it will transform the way people in our community interact with the Nepean River. In fact, they'll be able to cross the river between Penrith and Emu Plains and actually see the river for the first time and also have a very safe pedestrian and cycle crossing and uh, celebrate one of the great landscapes in our community. We've also started construction on our new ambulance superstation, uh, 22 bays uh, with the best possible working conditions for our um, tireless working paramedics across the community. We're also seeing massive upgrades to Penrith Railway Station, uh, which is seeing uh, upgraded stairs, new lifts and upgraded concourse, improved bus uh, and taxi uh, areas, and we've also seen significant upgrades to lighting and CCTV. It's the largest upgrade that Penrith train station has ever seen. We're also now underway with works on a new 350-place station car park, making sure that those commuters are better catered for. We've already started work, particularly the planning work around the widening of Mulgoa Road, uh, with early stage works happening uh, across the Jane Street intersection, and we're in the first planning phase for the M4 uh, Mulgoa Road interchange. We're also seeing this year, uh, after announcing the design plans for Northern Road, um, Northern Road widening happening in 2017. These are two crucial roads for the Penrith community, and this government has taken responsibility for upgrading them. But beyond infrastructure, we're also seeing great results, Mr Speaker, in what we're doing across education, and particularly the resource allocation model that's seen $12 million invested in needs-based funding into our community. And I, for one, am very, very proud of this government's decision to be right at the forefront of supporting Gonski funding. I know that my community is benefiting from it. Good examples of that are Penrith South Public School that's used their RAM funding or their needs-based funding to release assistant principals to work shoulder to shoulder with classroom teachers and one-on-one -on -one environments making sure those students get the services and support they need to get ahead in life. We're also um, making sure that those families that have to work long distances away from Penrith are getting supported with our out-of-school hours care. And Penrith is a community that has really benefited from what is colloquially known as the USH program. And six new schools have already opened up USH centres uh, in Penrith. St Finbar's at Glenbrook, St Mary MacKillop, Henry Fulton, Glenbrook Public School, Penrith South and Our Lady of the Way have all taken full advantage of this particular program. We've also rolled out flashing lights across many of our schools and just recently we've now got flashing lights at St Dominic's College at Kingswood and also St Nicholas of Myra. Um, TAFE has been a big winner uh, uh, in our community and we've seen the $27 million TAFE Health and Student Services Centre open at Kingswood, really reinforcing just how much this government is focused on vocational education in this community. And then, Mr Speaker, what has been something that I have been fighting for for a very long period of time and one that our community desperately needs, the $570 million investment in the Peen Hospital, the largest single investment in the Peen Hospital that has ever happened in its history. And it's about correcting the mistakes of the past and preparing the Peen Hospital for the bright future that it deserves. And it's really important, Mr Speaker, that I put on the record here that at the moment that commitment is $200 million more than anything that's been offered by those opposite. You don't need to look any further than that about the difference between what this government is doing for the people of Penrith and what the opposition is proposing. But it's beyond capital works too, Mr Speaker. Our local health district has seen a 50 per cent increase in recurrent funding annually uh, since 2011. The comparison in real figures is $500 million under Labor annually to $740 million each year under this government. That's not just about bricks and mortar, that's about making sure doctors, nurses and services are actually in there filling the wards. That's what this government has been about. We've also seen 300 full-time staff 
uh, uh, come into our health network, 234 nurses and over 70 new doctors, and I just recently got to meet many, many of those. We've also seen cultural opportunities expand with Ballet Under the Stars coming to Sydney, and I was very happy to be part of that. And I'm also very proud to be welcoming the High Performance Rowing Centre for Women coming to Penrith, calling it home. There's no doubt the last 12 months has been a bumper 12 months in Penrith. Thank you. We're hearing private